halben Tag weiter diskutieren oder noch mehr. Wir freuen uns, dass wir jetzt zum Schluss des heutigen Tages einen Beitrag haben noch im Rahmen der internationalen Zusammenarbeit. Marinos Ioannidis ist UNESCO und ERA Chair for Digital Cultural Heritage, ist also so in dieser ganzen Thematik drin, in die wir, mit der wir uns auch beschäftigen, da es eine Veranstaltung ist im Rahmen der Ratspräsidentschaft, wird Marinos in Englisch sprechen, wie es im Programm steht, How a Pandemic Bumped Up Digital Cultural Heritage in Society. Aber Marinos Ioannidis spricht sehr gut Deutsch, er hat nämlich in Deutschland studiert und äh, sollten hinterher, äh, äh, sollten Sie Fragen haben oder sowas, ist das problemlos in Deutsch äh, zu machen. Marinos kann eben in Deutsch auch antworten. Dann würde ich jetzt das Wort an Marinos Ioannidis übergeben. Good evening, uh, Berlin. My name is Marinos Ioannidis and I am representing the UNESCO Chair or, and the ERA Chair on Cultural Heritage. First of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It is an honor to be with you together. And uh, Grüß Gott from Nicosia, which is the last uh, divided uh, city in Europe. You have it behind you, we have it in front of us. Uh, and of course, congratulations uh, for your project and uh, the excellent uh, conference. I was in the position today to follow up uh, despite uh, the heavy uh, loading of work which uh, we had here locally. Next slide, please. Um, we do more or less this what you do. We are trying to Uh, digitize, but also at the same time to preserve the memory of our parents. Uh, why? Because not only to protect and preserve, but also because of uh, in front of us are the eyes of our children. The next one, please. Um, I would like to go and um, give you an, um, a very short uh, definition of what the museum is uh, from our side. Um, and uh, this starts with our name, um, Nemosini, 2,500 years ago, which was the mother of uh, nine uh, ladies. The ladies who were in charge to protect, to preserve uh, the memory of the ancient Greeks, the muses. These ladies and the mother had a temple and the name of the temple was museum. And uh, what was the function of that museum? That was the place when the ancient Greeks went to preserve their memory, to preserve uh, their story for the future. The next one, please. And uh, That's uh, okay. It's a PDF. It's uh, it has been transferred to a PDF. It's not anymore a, um, a PowerPoint presentation. But nevertheless, um, I started with 2,500 years ago. Now 31 years ago. Uh, you know what happened in Berlin. Uh, Berlin was with the Berlin again. Uh, but then on that time, before the wall uh, was uh, gone on that night, it was a conference in Berlin, and that was all about um, advanced geometric modeling for engineering applications. That was the era when ICT went or started working for the automation in mechanical engineering, 31 years ago. That has been discussed there. And this, or a part of that, It is already included in your project, in the Museum 4.0. So the advanced modeling of uh, objects of uh, knowledge, it is now in the area of humanities, of humanities and social sciences. Next, please. In 2014, uh, six years ago, The title of a conference in Dresden was Access and Understanding Networking in the Digital Era. That 
was the ICOM CEDOC uh, uh, conference organized from uh, Monica uh, in uh, Dresden. That was the beginning, I will say, of uh, the German collaboration uh, in the area of digital cultural heritage. Next slide, please. And then um, if we go and see from our point of view, from, let's say, um, what is actually a, a museum object, we will see um, an example here which is um, located at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens in Greece. It is one of the most important uh, objects in that museum, and it represents the oldest analog computer of the world. It's more than 2,000 years old object. But if you see on the left-hand side what uh, or how the object looks like, and then if you see on this side, and uh, now I want to link to the previous one uh, slide which I showed to you about the conference on that day when Berlin was Berlin again. Advanced uh, geometrical modeling in uh, engineering, yeah, in mechanical engineering. And look now this, which is used today in the area of humanities and uh, social sciences. So the use of high tech in the area of museums to recover, and I would like to highlight this word, knowledge, which is hidden here in this object, and not only hidden, um, uh, it is uh, in a, such a language um, not only hidden, but encoded in a such a way that with this what you, we see here on the right-hand side, it is a genius engineering. A genius engineering of a high class, or when uh, engineers today see, they are saying it is impossible that something like that was existed on that time. But it is a reality. Uh, next slide, please. It was an animation, okay? It was lost because of the transfer of the of the um, of the PD of the PPT to PDF. But it doesn't matter. We can see it later if there is a discussion. Next one, please. So this object, actually, since two thousand years, um, or on that time, it was lost. It has been discovered 100 years ago, and it's uh, since then in the museum in Athens. This object um, has a special uh, language. It's trying actually to talk. It's trying to communicate. I'm using now some of the words that uh, colleagues used today during the, the presentation, but even during the last session. Um, they are trying to communicate with us, with the visitors, with those going to, to see the, the, the objects. But we are not in the position to understand, to get these um, audio signals in the appropriate frequency and wavelength so that we can um, understand the, the, the story, the memory, the identity which is encoded in that object identity also so far as knowledge so far as genius engineering concern and genius mathematics yeah and um i i would like here in private to mention that there in this mathematics you will find two thousand years ago the kepler laws the the astronomer the german astronomer the copernico law no, these two people, they didn't uh, plagiarize. They didn't copy-paste from, from the ancient Greeks. No, they had to rediscover all this, what they, uh, what, whatever they discovered. And now it's how can the digital era, the ICT, this high tech of the 21st century, make it possible for us to understand, to access, to preserve, to protect the history of mankind in a time period 
uh, my dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, when worldwide we don't have standards, there are only two standards. This is the CITOC CRM and the object ID and nothing more. And that's a pity because each one is trying to document, to digitize, each one is trying to recover the knowledge or uh, reconstruct to reverse engineer this what it was all the time. But at the end of the day, so far as uh, long-term preservation concern and protection of that knowledge over the time, all of us, we fail because of the revolution of the ICT and whatever is changing every day in our domain. Next slide, please. Yeah, it is a place of knowledge, of story, of memory and identity, and it is also a place to preserve and protect. And this is now what we are going to do with the digital museums. We want to, uh, to, to create a place, digital places for knowledge, for story, for memory, identity, and of course to protect and preserve. Yes, next slide, please. And then the pandemic arrived. Uh, and um, that was uh, the most significant global disaster of the century. And one of the most significant challenges uh, the humanity has faced since the Second World War. Actually, it is the Third World War, because all the war is fighting now against this invisible um, um, enemy. Next slide, please. And then suddenly, the news talked again about the museums, about these spaces of knowledge and uh, of memory. They closed. And that was a, in the news. It was a momentum for all of us. Yes, next, please. Um, and the, the UNESCO report came out uh, two months, three months later, saying that out of the 182 states, uh, that's uh, the members of UNESCO, 156 closed their museums, business closed. 90% of uh, the museums, uh, so more or less 85,000 institutions, closed the, the, their doors forever. Uh, so, which means what? The analog world shut down. It was over. But at the same time, please, next slide. If we see what it means, uh, what it's the impact to close museums, to close all these institutions, you see here, for example, uh, the staff, what is happening with the staff, reduction of programs, loss of public funding, loss of private funding, sponsoring, and during the time when the museums uh, are closing and so on. And you see here that the, the three different variations from uh, um, a, a nice graphical presentation from ICOM. Next slide, please. And then here from NEMO, one of the latest uh, results, where you see the increase um, in, um, of course, relation to the start, but also at this, uh, the relation to as it was before and now, and considering to start when online service activity yeah, increased. So we are moving now from the uh, stage of the analog to the digital. Next slide, please. And you see what is uh, happening around Europe, at least the European map here, coming out from Digital Museums, uh, an initiative in, in uh, Austria, uh, during the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So we see the analog world of the museums is closing, shutting down, but the analog is going up. Next, please. And I don't want to repeat this, what it states here in this report, but this is actually the report where someone can, can make a reference. It is, a, it is unbelievable that during the six months from March until, let's say, September or October, we see here a 38% worldwide increase 
at least so far as interest on virtual museums, on virtual libraries, and on virtual archives. I'm not talking now about the e-commerce or about the e-business and so on. That's only our area. Next slide, please. Yes, and if we see now this COVID-19 tsunami, I gave the name tsunami, this, this definition. We have on the one side the analog institutions, the cultural heritage uh, institutions, and museums are closing. Um, and at the same time, the, the society moved to digital and the media press was totally surprised. We saw, um, and I would like to invite you to see the uh, Euronews uh, report. On the other side, the digital heritage is facing a growth at the moment. And it is um, the fact that within the last six months, and because the year now is coming to the end, they are preparing for the 2021 uh, budget proposals. And the technology is in, the ICT is in. Human resources, so far as education, vocational training, new skills concern. But then on the other side, we see an increase on, on the policy uh, making where the European Commission uh, went out and did a worldwide survey with, and they received a surprise a response from around the world, 600, 700 responses, which is a high uh, number. And then on the national level, all the different studies which went uh, through, we saw here on a pan-European level, uh, the NEMO, but also the ICOM, then the UNESCO worldwide and so on, Next slide, please. So, and if we take now the messages of the, at least from the time when I was able to follow up your conference, uh, it was clear, digital transformation is the hit. The Corona uh, 19 uh, is a driver in digital heritage. Um, uh, and in this digital era, we are trying what? To understand the world, but also on the other side, we have the landscape over the time or the knowledge over the time. And then the use and reuse of this knowledge using modern multimedia methods and communication uh, tools and so on, XR presentations we have. But then we have here an obstacle, which is the sustainability of all these technologies and of all these applications that you develop now, even during the museum for point, uh, uh, zero. And um, what we would like to achieve actually with this, what it has been developed with or without the coronavirus up to now. Yes, next slide, please. And it's clear, and this is also a message coming from, from Nemo, uh, but I'm sure that you are going to have a, a Nemo presentation, even if you didn't have today to promote open access to cultural heritage and use digital online tool to support digitization and enhancing digital skills uh, to educate um, vocational training, for example, in, in your area, and then invest on what makes museum unique and their collections and rich content. And here is where we, as the UNESCO chair, and as well as the European research area, coming and say, if a museum is a place of knowledge, if it's a museum is a place of memory, of a story and of identity, and then this is the challenge that we have in front of us with all the technology available, then we need to invest. To invest, to get this knowledge out of these analog spaces, closed analog spaces, and bring it to all the individuals, to all the professionals, from A like an architect or archaeologist, B like biologist, C like civil engineer or a chemical engineer, up to Z, to the last uh, um, uh, um, letter in the, in the alphabet. All the professionals have to profit out of that. But to do that, it is a matter of managing knowledge and managing memory, which is now at the beginning when we don't have standards in place, 
the greatest challenges that the sector of humanities and social sciences are undergoing. Together, of course, with the multidisciplinary rest of other areas like ICT, informatics, or cultural informatics, or even um, electrical engineering, uh, civil engineering, architecture, and so on and so on. Next slide, please. And a project was uh, coming, or is, came to an end uh, last year, was coordinated from us. SPK was a partner. Um, uh, and the message that we send out is, and that was last year, not now, but this is what we uh, proposed on that time as an action plan for digital cultural heritage here was harnessing key technologies for exploitation of the digital cultural heritage, deploying technologies to engage wider audiences for digital cultural heritage. And please, if I go here through all these 10 points, you will see this is actually this what you presented today. And it is this what you are actually highlighting through your project. On the other side, by the sustainable infrastructure for digital transformation of cultural heritage, you have the guarantee, or we have the guarantee, that at least a part of this recovered knowledge, if not all of that, in the digital era can be preserved for a longer time period. And now the time arrived, ladies and gentlemen, where we are talking about holistic documentation, the 3D digitization, the 2D digitization. It is a state of the art of the last century. Now it is the time, the time arrived where we need to embed to this 3D geometrical structures, knowledge, memory, identity, and all this kind of, of uh, things, very important thing. Full accessibility, accessibility to everyone around the world, 24 hours uh, seven. And of course, we need for that sustainability to get organized. And not only on a national level, like you do in an excellent way, and congratulations once again for, for Germany, putting such an, agenda, such an agenda in place in a country which is, um, uh, I'm using the word uh, in cooperation, yeah, federal, uh, with 16 other um, uh, states. We need a center on digital cultural heritage to help and support even small uh, um, institutions around uh, the continent. And I'm saying that by using two very famous uh, hashtags of um, Europe during the pandemic, which is stronger together, united in diversity, yeah? And human resources, the education and the training. You started in Germany and you are one of the first countries doing that, introducing cultural informatics, introducing digital humanities, and so on in your tertiary educational level. What's happening with the rest of the world, with the rest of Europe, with the rest 26 countries? It is an exception to find today cultural informatics. Cultural informatics is digital cultural heritage um, education. Um, and then of course, at the same time and in parallel with the vocational training, with this what it is needed, it is needed to, to train those who are now in charge of this, what we say, the knowledge space, the, the, the memory places and so on. And then of course, the local and the national uh, policy is good, but the international cooperation in this level, it is much better. I'm saying that ladies and gentlemen, by giving you an example, the day when the, the German digital library went online, when you had the inauguration, I was one of the 50 people uh, present on that event in Berlin. And the first thing that I did during the break was to run to the computer and see what it is there in the digital form from my country, from Cyprus. And I took some of these pieces with me on a paper, of course, the, some records, some metadata, and I brought them to Cyprus, and I told to the people here, do you know 
Have you ever seen, have you ever heard about that? Yes, we know, but we are not sure and all this. And in few pieces, they didn't know. So it's a virtual repatriation of our memory and of our identity, which is preserved and um, protected under your supervision. So we need the policy, we need the international cooperation, we need more investment in this, in this particular area. Next slide, please. And then that was Europe before, but what is happening uh, so far as UNESCO concerned? And we see here, yeah, um, digital cultural heritage. It is actually the ideal area where every cent counts to, in, um, to invest for the sustainable development goals, for the UN sustainable development goals. To give you some example, education, learning from the past, yeah? Lesson learned from the past. But whom am I telling this to the Germans? No way. Then gender issue. If I see today the speakers and so on, it's something that you achieved actually. Contributing to the society, it comes from the society. It's per default uh, 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 an area for the society and coming from the society and to the economy. It, imagine now that the museums starts worldwide to digitize this. Not only what it is invisible in the different kind of exhibitions, but in the undergrounds and in their undergrounds, the archaeological sites, the monuments and all this how many new jobs will be in place? And that is what? It is the guarantee for the start of free online 24 seven access to the knowledge of our fathers, of our grandfathers, to our memory. Next slide, please. I would say, thank you, if Haristo, I came to an end, but I would like at the same time to announce to you a conference which starts next Monday here in Cyprus. It's going to be fully online this time, and it is focusing exactly in the main problems of what? Of the moment when we transfer the analog world to the digital world the moment when artifacts are moving from the way of how they are presented in the museum to the, to, the, to the way of how they are represented in the memories of our computers or in the cloud. And from there, how we can sustain this memory, these records in a such a way so that not only to be preserved, and protected, but also to be used and reused for a long term, and not just only for, okay, that's a virtual exhibition, and let's see what we're doing uh, next. Every cent here, it is not seen as a current growth for tomorrow. No, it is seen as a growth for the, for, for the next 20 or 30 years. Think only that it is an investment for the generation to come and not for us. Us is just only us is for us is only the duty to take now action as you did, and especially to convince the politicians, those who are in charge for the policy policy, but also of the money to invest even more to this what it is uh, here. Once again. Dankeschön, es war sehr schön, bei Ihnen dabei zu sein, obwohl es auch digital äh, ist und so weiter entfernt. Vielen Dank.